Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or good afternoon. This is Belen Gallego, uh, CEO of Ata Insights, and I'm joining today from Madrid, and I'm speaking to you from Madrid. Today, in this online session, which is part of the Skill Development Program for Renewable Energy Professionals, we're going to discuss an issue that is actually very trendy at the moment, which is solar opportunities in Egypt. A lot has happened in the past few months in Egypt, several rounds of, um, of uh, tenders for solar and wind um, have taken place. And with us today, speaking of the opportunities and what is happening in this really interesting market, uh, we have with us uh, Mohammed from Aqua Power. We have Soraya from Infinity, which I'm going to ask for them to introduce themselves in a minute. And we also have a man from the Egyptian Electricity Transmission Company. Um, we also had a speaker from Ascatec, but unfortunately we had some problems this morning, uh, you know, with IT, and so he is not present, unfortunately. It's really interesting, though, that we have here two ladies with us. It's not very common in a webinar, so I'm really happy uh, that today we're majority. Woo, here we go. So first, I would like to ask uh, Mohammed, can you introduce yourself, please, your company briefly, and also where you're joining today from? Just to mute your microphone for me. Hello, all. Hello, all the participants and uh, Belen. Thanks for ATA Insights for arranging such webinar as usual and supporting the renewable energy. Uh, I'm Mohammed Nasef from uh, Aqua Power, uh, joining from uh, Dubai. Aqua Power is a uh, power uh, and uh, water uh, developer in the Middle East and uh, Europe. Uh, so yes, we'll be taking you today uh, to a tour about solar energy in Egypt and what has happened over the last few years and uh, what uh, we're expecting on the, over the next years. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mohammed. And we're looking forward to hearing because actually Aqua is doing very well in Egypt, I guess, as well as everywhere else as well. Soraya, please introduce yourself, your company, and where you're joining from. Just make sure you mute yourself because otherwise we can hear you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. And this is uh, Soraya Hassan from uh, Infinity uh, Solar. I, uh, I work here as uh, the business development manager. And uh, we would like to thank ATA Insights for the, the, this uh, kind of invitation and the, the, the interest in the, in, the, in the energy market here in, in Egypt, uh, keep, keeping everyone inside here. And uh, I, I basically work in Infinity Solar since uh, the initiation, uh, working here uh, basically in the market and expanding all over the area. Thank you very much, Soraya. So we'll hear from both of them. Uh, we're going to start, though, from the EETC, the transmission company in Egypt. Uh, we did have a few issues in the earlier on, you know, with the, with the microphone, but hopefully we'll be able to hear Emmanuel. Before she starts talking, though, I just want to ask, uh, just, just to say a few things to you guys. Um, one, you have the Q&A box, as usual, you know, at the bottom of the toolbar, so you can send your questions through there. Two, I suppose more urgent, if you like, is um, we normally uh, encourage you guys to share where you're joining from. We get a kick out of seeing, uh, you know, where people are joining from. We usually have a lot of countries represented and it's really cool for speakers to see. So by all means, say hi and tell us, you know, your name, where you're from. Uh, use the question and answer box, please. We'll get to this at the end. Um, and Right now, let's just quickly um, ask Eman. You still there? Can you hear me? Hello, Eman. Your microphone is open. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Hi. I am, Hi how are I you? I am hearing you. Hi. Excellent. Hi. So, how are you? We're very well. We're now broadcasting. We have. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So, could you okay. be so kind as to direct a few words to us? We will start with your words and then we'll move on to Mohammed and Soraya. Okay, I'm not sure. We're having issues. So, Christian? 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 Can, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. okay. So, sorry, the connection is very, very bad. I am very sorry. Keep going, keep going. Now we can hear you I, well. Yes, yes, I am glad 
to be with you for the first webinar. And uh, sorry for Engineer Lamia, she, uh, she couldn't uh, attend our webinar today. Uh, welcome uh, my colleagues from ACO Power and the Infinity Solar. Uh, and uh, I am Iman, uh, uh, General Manager for Renew Renewable Private Power Projects in Egyptian Electricity Transmission Company. Uh, and uh, we are uh, uh, talking now about the burning solar projects and uh, wind projects. Uh, so if you like to give you an introduction um, uh, to uh, to use uh, to use the connection now because unfortunately it it may disconnect okay uh, Christian he, okay okay uh, as, go, go as ahead you know, man give us your speech give okay, us your speech okay as you know okay due to the announced the strategy. Uh, for uh, the Ministry of Electricity and uh, Renewable Energy, uh, we have to reach 20% from the generated energy in 2022 from renewable energy, and about 42% in 2035, in the year 2035. To verify this strategy or to uh, reach to the percentage, uh, the private sector uh, was the make play, main player in the renewable energy private uh, projects. Uh, the private sector has a large percentage, about 67 percentage from the generated electricity in renewable. And for that reason, we already in 2009 uh, issued the first power wind project, the private one. And fortunately, we reached to the financial closure with the consortium, with the successful consortium last October. And now they uh, started construction on the project. Uh, this project operate uh, scheme and we have uh, optimal plan to and we have offers for many from many developers to replicate the project of the other half. Christian? Yes, you, you're calling for any Christian in particular, uh, Eman? Uh, uh, excuse me. Sorry, you're calling the Christian? Some, some no, Christian? no, 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 no. You are be Belen, Belen. Yes, correct. Sorry, yes. sorry, sorry. No, don't worry, it's okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so for the BO projects in wind and the solar, uh, we already now have plan to, to replicate the first to end the project. Uh, we can reach to about uh, uh, 1,000 1, uh, during the next years, the two next years from when the projects in BO schemes. Uh, for solar projects, we already uh, uh, issued the first one uh, for 200 megawatt in Komongo project. And now we are expecting to receive the shortlisted proposal on the 1st of July in 2018. And we expect uh, to this project uh, uh, 10 months for construction. So we expect it to be ready in the uh, second half of the year 2019. Uh, for BO projects also, 
uh, we have uh, two in pipelines, 200 additional 200 megawatt uh, BV project in west of Nile, and 100 CSB project in west of Nile. And we are now working uh, to hire consultant, international consultant, to finalize the request for proposal for the shortlisted bidders. And uh, as my colleague know, we have uh, a, 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 big, a big list or a long list for shortlisted bidders in these projects in Komongo and the west of Nile, uh, wind and the solar projects, and also for the CSB. So, uh, we expect the next year, uh, it will be very success uh, in using the BO projects to be implemented on the ground and to, to make a big difference to satisfy the strategy. Uh, regarding the feed and tariff projects, uh, as you know, and, uh, and here a lot of times, the feed and tariff projects uh, was con uh, concentrated, the program, uh, in two phases. The first phase, uh, it ended uh, in the end of year 2016, and uh, two, uh, developers only uh, continue uh, their projects. One of them already finalized the 50 megawatt project in Bemban and connected to the grid. And fortunately, uh, they, uh, they already paid the first invoice. And we hope all, all the developers in the feed and tariff program uh, reach the COD and connected uh, for the feed and tariff projects or search, uh, achieving the financial closure. And now we are working with them closely to finalize the technical issue regarding the code compliance and the uh, uh, studies for their projects uh, received a lot of uh, documents from uh, many developers uh, on site to uh, start their construction successfully after the approval of the ATC and the feed and tariff unit for their documents. Uh, and uh, on the other side, as ATC is the sole uh, uh, company working between the generation uh, so we have uh, such as a merchant scheme, uh, which, uh, which the developers uh, have their own consumers and the, they use the network or the transmission lines uh, to transfer the energy generated to their consumers. And we expect that scheme will uh, work successfully uh, in the future, inshallah, because the feed and the feed and tariff program uh, uh, ended, the phase ended. The BO projects uh, depends on the off taker, as ETC will purchase the generated energy, and the other schemes uh, like the IBB. Uh, it will it will be um, uh, yeah, more uh, more speedy for the developers to have their uh, generation projects and their customers and use the network only. Uh, the valence it's from 
500 kilowatt or lower and uh, up to 20 megawatt. And that will help uh, the medium scale projects to be connected otherwise on the transmission lines or the uh, transmission company or the distribution companies. Um, for uh, for also wind uh, projects in feed and tariff, uh, the, the deadline will be as the cabinet decree will be 27th of this April. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we feel that no developer can reach the financial closure for, 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 for many reasons. Uh, so we hope after the deadline of the financial closure of the wind projects, we can uh, concentrate on the competitive bids for wind and also for uh, solar projects. If you like to ask me any uh, feedback or any questions, uh, I, uh, I am welcoming. And uh, sorry, I, uh, I am seeing you, but you can't uh, see me. <laughs> I, I hope that you hear me well. Eman, in the end, we heard you pretty well. There was a few issues, but for the most part, we did. So thank you very much for talking to us. It's also pretty inspirational to hear EETC say, so happy to pay your invoices, you know, when it's finally renewable energy. So that was really good. And um, there are a few questions here, but we'll take them at the end. So we will see what happens with your audio, you know, if you're still there. If not, um, I think we have your email address, right? Uh, so we can always, if people ask any questions, we can always redirect them to you. So can I now invite Mohammed to share his screen and to show us his presentation and we'll take it from there. Keep sending us the question at the bottom. Uh, Mohammed, remember to also unmute your microphone. Keep oh, sending yes. us questions. Uh, so far, we've got people from Kuwait, from the UAE, we've got people from Denmark, from St Stockholm, from Germany, people from everywhere. So this is really excellent. Go ahead, uh, Mohammed. Let's let's hear let's hear your presentation. Okay. Okay. Today we'll go through uh, this interesting presentation, which uh, I will try to make it as short as possible. Uh, first, we will take a tour about power sector in Egypt and uh, how is uh, the energy mix is currently uh, structured, and we will take some insights on the laws and. Uh, and regulation that's issued to support the investors in investing in renewable energies. And we'll take a quick look on uh, solar resources in Egypt and the opportunities that already Engineer Eman have covered. And also uh, we'll take a look at the socio-economic benefits of solar energy, which is a very important uh, aspect of these projects. And we'll take a quick comparison uh, on power project business models uh, for the implementation. Okay. Uh, power sector in Egypt uh, over the last years or since early years has mainly uh, been uh, dependable on conventional power generation, uh, steam and gas turbines, which uh, represented almost 90% uh, of the installed capacity. And uh, the rest is a well, uh, majority was hydro generation for, uh, from the high dam. And uh, the renewables percentage were very low with almost one to two percent, which is mainly wind and very minor percentage of solar PV, which were mainly uh, industrial or, uh, or sometimes off-grid. Uh, and the total uh, grid capacity in 2016 has reached uh, 39 gigawatts, which is uh, considering part of the huge Siemens projects, not for not all of them. And uh, actually the peak load in 2016 has reached 29 uh, gigawatt. And uh, doing some studies, uh, the load uh, expected to reach uh, 65 gigawatt by 2022. Uh, and this will be more detailed in the next slide. So here we can see uh, the expected uh, grid capacity uh, against the load uh, demand over uh, from 2016 until 2025, uh, and this uh, this uh, this scenario was based on some assumptions that we have done ourselves to make an overview of the electricity sector. Uh, 
this considering that all projects in pipelines, including conventional, uh, renewable, and, uh, and even a part of the nuclear to be online uh, as per the plan and to be connected to the grid before 2025. And also this considering load forecast uh, expansion of 7% per year, which is the normal in Egypt over the last years. And also considering almost 20 gigawatt of uh, large industrial projects like uh, the new capital, uh, the golden triangle, uh, the Seos Canal uh, economic uh, development zone. So in spite of this uh, huge power capacity additions expected, uh, we can see that uh, starting from 2021, we will start having some problems, in, uh, especially in the spinning reserve, which is normally, as per the international recommendations, uh, would be almost 15% of the grid capacity. So uh, although all these uh, capacity additions will happen over the next years, we will still, by 2021, need to add uh, more capacities. So this needs uh, for sure immediate attention and to keep uh, and to make sure that all projects are uh, are being uh, executed uh, on track. So actually, the legislative framework in Egypt has been uh, one from the early countries in the in the region that has issued robust laws and regulations to support renewable energy, starting by the renewable energy law. Uh, which is issued in uh, 2014, and it stipulated that the mechanisms for the renewable energy procurement, uh, like a procur like a direct bidding, uh, feed in tariff, and also organize uh, how lands would be allocated for renewable energy projects. And this was followed by the announcement of the feed in tariff regulations in October 2014, which will be detailed later and already engineer and give a good brief about it. Then in 2015, uh, Egypt issued the new electricity law, uh, which mandated the segregation of uh, Egyptian electricity transmission company from, uh, from the holding company to be uh, an independent uh, off-taker and the transmission system uh, operator. And this one of the very first steps towards uh, unbundling of the electricity sector to be a merchant market. And also in uh, 2017, we had the new investment law uh, issued which gave a lot of protections to all investors, not only on renewable energy, and uh, gave them a lot of guarantees uh, to repatriate their profits in foreign currency and give them some incentives in terms of tax exemptions and uh, exemption of the budget dedicated for corporate social responsibilities. And uh, these laws were then followed by uh, the Sustainable Energy Strategy to 2035, which is approved by the cabinet, as we see here. In October 2016, it was approved by the cabinet to have uh, to 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 decide what is uh, the optimum supply mix of electricity, which would lead uh, lead us to the, the least expensive and most efficient mix in Egypt. Also, one of the very good steps taken by the government was uh, the USD uh, flotation in November 2016. For sure, it had a big impact on the inflation levels, but in terms of uh, investors, it was very good uh, as it, uh, it improved the USD availability and makes the dividends repatriation uh, more easier. Also, the, uh, the gradual removal of electricity subsidies uh, allows the renewable energy to be more competitive as it shrinks the gap between the conventional energy cost and the renewable uh, energy cost, which would allow Egypt to reach the grid parity uh, very soon. Uh, <clears throat> here is a quick look over solar resources uh, in Egypt. Uh, Egypt is considered if, is uh, one of the best uh, Sorry. Yes. It's considered one of the best uh, locations uh, in the world to have uh, solar resources. It has uh, almost 2,000 to 300 uh, to 3,000 uh, kilowatt hour per meter square per year. And sunshine duration is ranged between 9 to 11 hours per day with very few uh, opportunity for clouds. And uh, also uh, with moderate uh, temperatures as the temperature is not very high, so it's not impacting the performance very much, comparing to other countries for sure. And the humidity level uh, is uh, is normal, also is moderate, not very high like uh, Gulf countries. 
Uh, also, this resource is very perfect uh, for uh, CSP, not only uh, PV, which uh, we hope to see soon. So this is a quick overview of the opportunities in the Egypt market, which uh, in general everyone have gone through. Feed and Tariff was started in October 2014, uh, which was one of the world's largest solar projects uh, in IPP uh, scale, uh, which uh, has a target of two gigawatt of solar PV and a similar target for wind. It attracted significant interest from the private sector. Almost 160 developers have applied for qualification. 60 of them were qualified for PV only for sizes ranging from 20 to 50 megawatt. Uh, actual projects that had reached financial close over the two rounds, one and the two, uh, could reach almost 1.4 gigawatt with expected uh, commercial operation in the first half of 2019. Uh, for the competitive uh, bids, uh, we had Comombo, which has been uh, in the market since 2013 and has experienced a lot of delays and uh, postponed. And finally, we had it out uh, the final RFP a uh, month, uh, couple of months ago, with a, with a bit due data in July. Uh, we have also a lot of projects in uh, West of Nile area. We have a solar PV with 200 megawatt and a CSP 100 mega and a wind project, which also we hope to see uh, the RFP going out soon so that we have some. Uh, more competition in, in Egypt. Regarding the socio-economic benefits uh, of the renewable energy, uh, globally speaking, renewable energy have provided almost 9.8 million jobs in 2016, where 30% uh, of them uh, was, uh, was from solar PV only. Uh, also, solar PV has uh, opened the door for uh, for all the scales of companies uh, to grow, uh, small, medium, and uh, larger scale, uh, ranging from developers to EPCs to consultants to subcontractors to suppliers, give them a very big range to uh, to make more business and to come to Egypt to explore new opportunities. Uh, as highlighted initially, there were almost uh, 160 consortium qualified under the feed-in tariff. And also, it has a very important effect on the local communities. As for uh, for Bimban projects, uh, it will secure uh, in range of uh, 11,000 uh, work opportunity for Egyptian nationals, for both white and blue colors, for over 1.5 to 2 years, which is a construction duration. And then for the operation, it's ex expected to provide jobs for uh, 300 to 400 uh, persons. Here we'll take a quick uh, comparison between uh, the project implementation models, which is IPP and the uh, EPC, the normal uh, procurement strategy. Uh, actually, in, uh, in the IPP model, uh, the good thing is that we have uh, the project company, which is established and uh, fully dedicated for uh, the project. Uh, so this makes it easier of tracking the project uh, activities and, uh, and financial uh, go through. And also, it expects uh, due diligence is being done by various parties, by the off-taker, by the developer, by the lenders, which is uh, ensure the project design and achievement will be on time and the design is sustainable. And also, the developer or the IPP uh, supplier uh, takes the risk of the project uh, technology for some technologies, for some new technologies like CSP. This technology risk is fully taken by the developer. Uh, the construction and the schedule risk is all on the developer side. Uh, the risk allocation between the parties actually forces each party to perform its obligations, whether the off-taker, whether the developer. Uh, due to the risk allocation put in the project agreement, it forces, uh, forces each party to follow closely its obligations. Okay, this is a quick table comparing the risk allocation as we discussed between uh, the developer and the government or the IPP. For sure demand and revenue are shared between them because at some at certain point of time if the developer has not uh, executed his obligation he will lose his revenue and uh, 
in, in comparison, the, the off-taker will also lose the, the energy that he was expecting to uh, procure from the IPP. Uh, design construction risk is fully towards the developer. Operation and maintenance and financial risks uh, are all borne by the developer. Uh, political risk, for sure, it's by the government. So we can see from this table that the risk is uh, actually skewed uh, more towards the developer. Uh, the benefits that, uh, to the off-taker in, uh, in this model actually that uh, it contributes to, uh, to reduce the debt structure, the debt on the, on the government, as these projects are not shown as a debt over the government. It's a payment or procurement of electricity. Uh, it gives opportunity to have uh, a higher performance uh, plans, uh, new technology, it gives opportunity to transfer uh, some of the technology and the know-how. Uh, the third party due diligence, uh, it attracts a lot of international investment like direct foreign investments and it for sure participates in community development as we have mentioned earlier. That's, uh, that's today from my side. Thank you for any questions. Thank you very much, Mohammed. You've also explained a lot, you know, about the basics of IPP versus EPC, which is really good. Soraya, if you can just stop sharing so that we give Soraya a chance and then we'll take the questions at the end. Okay, um, it's quite interesting, you know, how we're changing everywhere. We're going from uh, feeding tariff, you know, that were the system of the past into competitive tenders now more and more. I expect this is going to be the case um, still more to come. Soraya, do you want to uh, share your screen and unmute yourself? You ready for your presentation? Excellent. Yes. Perfect. So do you have the presentation now? Yes, we can see it. Go for it. Okay. So uh, this is uh, the, the presentation of, uh, of Infinity Solar and uh, basically the, the, the whole uh, profile portfolio specifically in the, in the Egyptian uh, industry, in the solar industry. Uh, Infinity Solar was established in 2014, basically right before the qualification for the feed and tariff program in Egypt. Uh, we have started as a local uh, EPC that provides uh, on-grid and off-grid solutions. Uh, we have already performed some uh, commercial projects right before the qualification of the PDM tariff project. And uh, we have got uh, qualified uh, as a project developer uh, in, uh, in, in, in uh, projects in, under the PDM tariff. Uh, we, we are providing basically full system integration, EPC, O&M, and uh, independent power production services like IPP scheme and also some uh, other residential and commercial uh, energy project systems in Egypt uh, and uh, ramming as well. Uh, in 2014, uh, Infinity Solar, we have been uh, qualified under the feed and tariff program in Egypt uh, in the three categories we had uh, under the below 500 kilowatt for uh, small and medium uh, projects. And we had been qualified for uh, four uh, megawatts and uh, below basically from two, uh, 500 kilowatt to 20 megawatt. And we had also been qualified uh, for the projects over 20 megawatt with the 50 megawatt and another 30 megawatt in, 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 uh, in Aswan in Ben Ben. Uh, our pipeline is basically we, we have now a total, uh, approximate total of 184 megawatt AC project. Uh, we uh, we had uh, in uh, in our uh, in uh, in our vision as Infinity Solar we had this uh, that we to uh, have uh, to look for competent uh, partners to uh, to develop uh, our own project and to have uh, the expertise enough in our team internally to uh, to start providing uh, solar uh, system uh, solutions. So we have uh, decided to start with a one megawatt uh, as a pilot project. Uh, uh, owned 100% by Infinity Solar uh, to train our uh, our uh, our employees in work, uh, and then in uh, in uh, as uh, engineer Iman said that we had uh, two consortiums um, have been qualified in uh, under round one under the feed-in tariff program. Uh, we were one of them, and we are uh, uh, we have um, had the 50 megawatt AC in uh, in Ben Ben in Aswan with our partners IBVOC, a German uh, EPC, and uh, as the partner in uh, owning 49% uh, 40, of the project and we have uh, this 50 megawatt it's already uh, uh, operational now under the feed and tariff in the in round one 
And we, for, uh, for round two also, we have uh, been uh, qualified or to continue to, to, to invest in, in round two projects as well. So we had other 100 megawatts, uh, 130 megawatts, and also three megawatts, 100% owned by Infinity Solar. All of these uh, four uh, pipeline projects in the under round two, they are under construction and uh, are expected to be operational by end of this year or Q1 2019. Uh, the, basically, we have uh, now for, uh, for the projects, we have uh, this uh, uh, picture for, uh, for the one megawatt. Uh, this was the first one megawatt under the feed tariff program in Egypt. And uh, the, 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 uh, here in, in the following slides is basically the technical and the basic information for, uh, for the project. Uh, this is also for the one megawatt, and this is the the 50 megawatt. It was uh, owned 51% uh, by Infinity Solar, 49% by IBBOG GmbH, and it was jointly developed by Infinity Solar, IBBOG, and Solizer. And we have, uh, as uh, as I said, the, the uh, four uh, other projects under round two. They are basically now under construction. Uh, financed by uh, the 50 megawatt is financed by uh, by IFC, 80 megawatts is financed by EBRD, and round one project was financed 80% by uh, by German uh, BLB uh, bank and the uh, ECA cover Hermes from the the, the Republic of uh, of, uh, of Germany. Soraya, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. But, uh, the, uh, we have our, our concentration since we are uh, an, an Egyptian uh, uh, company that we had our focus for, uh, for a better environment, for helping the community, for enhancing the, the community. And uh, we have also interest in the, in the, in the carbon uh, footprint savings and uh, investing in these. Um, and uh, we, have, uh, we have started to also work on uh, having the, the statistics and calculation for carbon footprint savings uh, as, uh, as it's shown in the, in the presentation with, the, with our current pipeline in the in, in Infinity Solar. And uh, about the, the commercial and residential uh, solutions, uh, under the feed tariff program first, we had uh, uh, in round one and round two, we had a couple of uh, commercial projects. Uh, and uh, now we have uh, BAO uh, projects uh, we are now uh, investing in, in, in commercial project, in medium scale commercial project under the, the, the tendering uh, scheme uh, and uh, on grid systems as well. Uh, we are now uh, in, uh, we have uh, potential projects for uh, around five uh, megawatts in Egypt. And also we have, um, uh, we, we started to collaborate in, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the MENA region and in Africa with the competing partners. And about, about uh, one of the, the points uh, that was in the, in the, the objective of, of this webinar was about the, the empowerment and the, the, the enhancement of the financial and, uh, and uh, the communities and the local communities. And uh, what we have, uh, we, we understood that uh, the responsibility towards society is a particular importance of the renewable energy uh, due to industry's potential for affecting the community, and this is a long-term investment. Basically, that should be accompanied as well with the, with the commercial, uh, with, the, with, the, with the local community enhancement uh, in terms of uh, financially and also helping uh, small businesses in the area. Uh, since we, uh, with this is, we are talking about the biggest uh, solar park uh, uh, in the in the world once uh, once in uh, operational. Uh, we were uh, basically the first ones on site in, uh, in Aswan, the first solar park to be uh, competed in Aswan. Uh, we had, um, we had, we were in a, uh, we had an ongoing uh, stakeholder engagement with the local community uh, to help them and to manage the risks and the impacts in the communities affected by this project. And during Infinity 50 construction, we were the first and only developer on ground for almost one year, which allowed us to maintain a close relation with the local community in terms of offering job opportunities. Uh, we're talking about 90% of work uh, force were hired from the local community, uh, about uh, 600 uh, at peak times, who at first didn't know anything about this technology, and now they have the technical capability. They uh, know about the, uh, we had the, the chance to, uh, to uh, 
enhance their technical background in the area and uh, in, in solar energy to develop their sense and awareness about health and safety practices, conformance standards of, of lenders from the environmental and social perspective. They, uh, they have um, uh, the, the, the small businesses there, some contractors were developed at that time that were actually able now know about the performance standards of lenders, that they know the technical capabilities required for these projects, which also um, made the uh, uh, motivation for, for, uh, for the NGOs in the area to, to start having uh, these trainings for, uh, for the local community to, uh, in order to be prepared for the whole park to, uh, to start construction in round two. So um, that was our part, and with the with the with the CSR as well, we had we one of the issues in the area in, in Aswan was about uh, related to the health sector, and we also developed uh, two dialysis units under construction as part of corporate social responsibility in the area with the local community. So uh, this is um, basically it. <laughs> so. Thank you very much, Soraya. That, that was great. Can you just stop sharing so that we can see you guys larger and maybe we can launch into some questions. We have maybe five minutes for that. Thank you very much, both of you, uh, Mohammed and Soraya, for your presentation. Also, Eman, although you know um, we couldn't see you, Eman, but still we, we did hear you. So let me see some of the questions here. Uh, there is, I think the, the issue of PV, CSP is coming up. You know, we've heard several times, we heard Eman said and also Mohammed. You know, the, you know the, the resource for CSP is very good. Uh, however, is there likely to be a CSP project anytime soon? Um, either of you know anything about this uh, situation with this, this the CSP projects? Who wants to answer? <laughs> Go on, Soraya. Yeah, I think engineer Iman uh... The thing is, I'm not sure. Yes. Oh, there we go. Go on, yes. go on, engineer. Yeah, yes, I will. Uh, for CSB projects, uh, the first time uh, for Egypt to use the uh, technology type for CSB. So when we issued the uh, pre-qualification uh, to ask developers who are uh, have the experience in CSB, we received the um, but um, unfortunately uh, till now we we is and it's not, we were and, and uh, this rfb if it is not good for the shortlisted bidders so uh, the for the developers uh, was high. For that reason, we postponed to issue the RFB uh, until uh, we had, and we uh, and we hope the CS grid megawatt to, to be implemented soon on the ground point of view for the stability of the network, for the uh, being the energy all the day, not, uh, not as a BV, uh, but it requires uh, good uh, technical issues to maintain these projects of CSB technology. I, we could hear only part of that. Um, um, I didn't really like what, what, is, what I would like to ask you, Eman, if it's possible to, for you to reply this on the chat, maybe by text, because I, I wasn't able to hear all of your answer. I mean, yeah. meanwhile, I'm going to ask just some quick questions. 
There is a question here for you, Soraya, that says, does Infinity do PV or also CSP? Uh, at this moment, we uh, we are only concentrating on the on the on the portable take. Uh, we have other other uh, investments or other collaborations, but uh, in the wind energy as well, our partners, but uh, not in the CSP at the moment here in Egypt. Okay, there is a question here that is also about uh, whether there is um, regulation for private industrials or private consumers that want to have their own renewable energy projects. Is there any regulation for that, for, for own consumption or self-consumption? Are there any limits, technology requirements, etc.? Either of you know about this? Uh, actually, uh, the, e, e, the Egyptian, the Egypt era, Egyptian uh, author, uh, authority basically for, for regulatory uh, has developed uh, regulations for the net metering for uh, for the residential and commercial uh, 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 solutions, PV solutions. Uh, we have already, uh, for, for the commercial, yes, we, we have uh, regulations for this. Uh, we had under the feed-in tariff, it was uh, limited to 500 kilowatt, but for, for direct usage as, as an EPC as well, we are collaborating with other uh, investors now to, to develop uh, commercial uh, uh, on-grid solutions for, for direct use, like uh, malls and, uh, and basically uh, bigger investors, high, large-scale projects. And is this just for electricity production or also for district heating, cooling, and all the rest of those? type of um, projects? For, for the heating and, and cooling, I think it, it has been there uh, in, in Egypt for, uh, for a very long time, even before the Kidin Tariff program. Uh, under the regulations, actually, there are certain areas here in, in Egypt that you are obliged to have uh, solar heaters from, as uh, in, in residential uh, compounds. So it, it has been uh, developed and uh, it's it's there. There are uh, investments in the not, not but I think in the tourism, specifically in the tourism sector here in Egypt, they are really focusing on the on the on having the the heating, solar heating. Excellent, thank you. And a question for Mohammed. Hopefully, I hope this is one is good for you. What is the status of the completion of the common grid connection work? I know it's more for a man, but I don't know if we'll hear her properly. For the FIT round two projects in Bemban. Okay, for the Banza substations for grid com connection is almost um, around 90% completed and the road works as well. So the only uh, thing pending is the last transmission line connecting the substation to, uh, to the transmission lines. But I believe uh, there is one substation, substation number one is completely connected to the grid where Infinity Solar Plant is uh, completed and the round one is connecting through it and Soraya to confirm this uh, information. Yeah. The other substations expected to be ready within the end of this year to be able to connect the rest of the entire round two project. Even I forget sometimes. There is one more here for you. Actually, there's a couple. Uh, one of them says, is it true that the tenders outside of the FIT would have a maximum cap at 38 uh, US dollars megawatt hour? And then can you repeat again? I don't know. Yeah, if the prices, is it true that in the, the, the maximum price, the cap would be $38 uh, megawatt hour? For the feed-in tariff? Yeah, uh, things okay. outside of the feed-in tariff, that is. No, actually, feed-in tariff is issued by a law, which is 8.4 cents per kilowatt hour, and this is low and cannot be changed. And for the tenders, so far there is nothing in the market that's stipulating a maximum cap or uh, or something okay. like that. Okay, there is one more here for PV. Let's see if I find it. Um, what is the PV net installed capacity in 2017? Do you happen to know, Mohammed? The PV net installed capacity? Yes. In, 20, in 2017? Yeah. Uh, actually, it's, uh, I think it's very, very low. I think maybe couple of hundreds of megawatts or maybe less because we have a very low uh, PV penetration now. And what is the, the forecast for the next five years or so? For the next five years, if we have the projects in pipeline completed, we'll have like 1.4 gigawatt from the feed-in tariff and we have like uh, 
like 400 megawatts from competitive tender, so it could reach up to two gigawatts of PV. Excellent. Okay, so there is one here that I like to ask all of you. You know, obviously, like larger and larger penetration of non-dispatchable resources, so that is PV and wind, will eventually hit the grid. You know, and the grid stability. And one of the options, of course, is installing more CSP that is dispatchable, as we know. Um, but also, there is a variety of other, you know, um, solutions. If you like, you can have a smart grid, or you can um, install batteries. Do we see any movements of the Egyptian government in order to move and invest in this sort of grid resilience uh, on any projects of that sort of description? And uh, where would the financing coming from? Would it be own or would it come from abroad, from other banks? So I suppose this is more of like a wider question. So all, the, both of you can answer it, perhaps. Okay, I think for uh, for the part regarding the grid uh, improvement, there is a, a strategy now being uh, sponsored by the Minister of Electricity, and they secured a certain amount of a uh, couple of billion dollars, I think, for the improvement of the transmission uh, network and to improve the control centers. And also, uh, there's a grid impact study is being carried for uh, Bimban project specifically to. Uh, to, to forecast the impact of the grid after uh, installing this uh, large amount of uh, PV. This for the part for the penetration for the CSP. Uh, normally, in most of the locations of the world, the PV uh, CSP uh, is coming through private uh, sector uh, through IPP. There is no government, uh, as far as I know, uh, taking the risk of installing CSP uh, from its own financing. So mostly, it will be private finance and. Uh, I hope uh, we see the, the tender for the CSP soon in Egypt. Me too, I certainly hope so. And at the prices that we're seeing in Dubai, I don't even think it would, you know, in Egypt it should, they should be quite competitive as well. So one, uh, Iman is just pointing out to me uh, by chat that the 3.8 that we mentioned earlier was actually a um, one project, but unfortunately it didn't really like go through. So Soraya, same question for you in terms of uh, grid resilience. What do you see, you know, uh, happening in the future in terms of steps for the Egyptian government or grid to be more resilient? Uh, uh, I, I think uh, Muhammad said it all about the, the grid resilient here. It's, we have the same uh, expectation with regards to the government and the improvement that's going on with the, with the grid improvements. And with the, from starting from the consulting phases or for studying the grid impact study on, on any any renewable energy projects specifically, and uh, to uh, to even the, the, the conventional projects for for the implementing as well. Excellent. Well, we don't have time for much for for both to have uh, uh, specific capacities uh, tendered and to have the the grid ready at that time. And that's what happened actually in Aswan. So the uh, we, we have to be we in the development phase for our own projects and EETC at the same time we're working and implementing the, the substations and the, 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 the KB lines for the evacuation. Well, thank you very much, Soraya. Thank you very much, Mohammed and Eman as well. Um, we don't have any more time today. It's been really interesting. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties we had at some point, but I think we've learned a lot today. And I think it's good to see that Egypt is moving in the right direction. 20% by 2022, it is um, a, daring, a daring target, considering also the size of Egypt, but I, it's absolutely doable. We are hoping to see CSP projects there very, very soon. And uh, I'd just like to say goodbye to all of you, and thank you for being here today. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank, thank you, Soraya. You. Thank you, Emma. And see you thank in the you next time. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.